I've been on Linux for about four or so years at this point, and all things considered, it's been a pretty smooth experience. I've been on Arch Linux the entire time, and I expected it to go, you know, a lot worse than it has. That's not to say there haven't been issues. There have been a couple of key issues, there's been a couple of package issues, but we're talking like two or so times a year. Absolutely nothing major. But even though I've never experienced this problem, there is one countermeasure that I've basically always had in place. On my system, I not only have the stable Arch Linux kernel, the kernel that you're probably going to install if you go through the Arch Linux install guide, I also have two other kernels. I have the LTS kernel and the Zen kernel. Now putting the Zen kernel aside for now, I'll get back to that in a bit, I think everybody on Linux should have at least two kernels installed at all times in one of two configurations. Now you can do extra, you can install 20 kernels at once if you really want to, but at least this as a bare minimum. A stable kernel and an LTS kernel, or the current stable kernel and an older stable kernel. If you're using Zen or LTS instead, it can be the current LTS or current Zen and then an older version as well. Now, I understand that LTS kernels can be a bit of a problem if you're running super, super up-to-date hardware, like a new GPU, a new CPU just came out like two or so days ago. A lot of the time, that won't play nicely just out of the box with an LTS kernel. Usually, there'll be some extra patches and extra tweaks you need to do to actually get it playing nicely. Some distros will do that for you. Other cases, not so much. So, why should you even bother? Well, it's not like a problem is going to happen on a regular basis. In fact, I've never had this problem myself. But there are some instances where a new kernel can be a bit of an issue. Firstly, for some reason or another, it doesn't play nicely with your hardware. Maybe a driver update comes in and that update is kind of unstable, it leads to more crashes, or maybe it's just outright broken on your hardware and your system is simply not going to boot. If you don't roll back to another kernel, you're just not going to be using that system. And thirdly, say there is some sort of fault during the installation process. Maybe you lose power, for example. You could be in a situation where your system is now no longer bootable. But if you had a backup kernel, well, you could just boot into the backup kernel. Now, I'm not saying these aren't problems that can be fixed after the fact. You could always just have a distro USB lying around like this one right here, and whenever there is a problem that cannot be fixed by just logging into the system, boot off of the USB, fix any of the issues that need to be fixed, and just go about your day. And that is exactly the recommendation I saw when someone asked this over on the Arch Linux forums. Do I need two kernels? I'm currently on Linux latest 5.11.10 to be precise. Should I install the latest LTS kernel as a backup in case an upgrade causes kernel issue? Or I'll be just fine with only one kernel. I do not modify or do anything with kernels or MK in its CPIO or a NIT RAMFS. And everyone here is just suggesting keep a USB around and fix it if you need to fix it. But I say, why bother doing that? Why even have that as a worry in your head? If you can take a mitigation strategy now and it has basically zero drawbacks, why don't you just do it? It's basically the same reason why my computer is on a surge protector. There's basically zero drawback in doing so. It doesn't inconvenience me in any real way. The only actual inconvenience is buying the surge protector is a couple dollars more expensive. But that's it. That's literally the only thing. I bought it a couple of years ago, and it's still working just fine. So in this case, I just have an extra option in my boot menu, the boot menu that I never actually look at anyway, because it just automatically loads the default, and on that rare occasion where something actually does go wrong, I can then address the problem then, and I don't need to worry about finding where this USB is, making sure there's actually a distro on it, and all of that stuff, I can just swap over, fix it, and then be done. Or in the case of a driver issue, maybe wait until a fix comes in and then install the fix and just go back to my regular option. Now, as for kernels like the Zen kernel, TKG, Zen mod, and these other kernels that track the current stable kernel, for the purposes of a backup kernel, 
I would avoid using those in combination with a stable kernel or another kernel that tracks the stable branch. Not because any of these modified kernels are bad projects, I can't speak for all of them, but when I use Zen, it was working perfectly fine. But instead, if there's a problem in the current stable kernel, it's very likely that's going to be a problem in the current Zen kernel or current TKG kernel or current Zen mod kernel. Unless it's part of the things they explicitly go and fix, it's probably still going to be an issue. Just to ensure that problem doesn't happen, your backup kernel should be an explicitly different version of the kernel. Whether your main kernel be the stable kernel, which right now is something like 6.5.2? Two, I want to say something along those lines, and then your backup kernel be the LTS kernel, which is right now on the 6.1 series, or your current kernel be a stable kernel, which is 6.5.3 or whatever, and an older version of that, like 6.4, for example. Being on Arch Linux, I need to go and set this all up myself, but depending on the distro you use, it might just be like this out of the box and you don't actually realize. For example, on Ubuntu, if you get a kernel update, it's going to keep some of those older kernels available and in your boot menu you can just like cycle back through them. It's not in like the main part of it, you need to go into your advanced options but all of that is still going to be there. So much so that there are countless blogs all over the internet about how to get rid of these older kernels. There is nothing wrong with getting rid of some of these older kernels but if you are going to get rid of them I highly recommend keeping at least one around that you know works perfectly fine with your hardware. Just in case, if anything goes wrong, you know it is going to be there. Also, when we're talking about these new fancy immutable distros, especially if we're talking about one that makes use of OS tree, these just have a rollback functionality built directly into them. Now, it's not just rolling back the kernel, it's rolling back the entire system, but this basically achieves the exact same goal. Also, as I said before, this is one of those very rare cases where there's basically no drawback to doing this. There is a minor, very, very minor storage bump issue. This may have been an issue a long, long time ago, and maybe an issue if you set up your system yourself and have a very, very minuscule boot. But nowadays we're talking at absolute most if you have like 10 different kernels installed, you know, a gigabyte of space. And if you're talking about an SSD that has a minimum of like 128 gig, I think you're going to be fine giving up one gig. And if we're talking about any more than that, like 256, 512, one terabyte of space in your system, I think you can give up, you know, it's probably going to be more like a couple hundred meg, not even a whole gigabyte. The slightly more annoying issue is exacerbated on a rolling release, but is going to be an issue on things like Ubuntu as well. If you make use of DKMS, say you're using NVIDIA, or in my case you're using VFRL to loopback, which is a thing that lets me make virtual cameras, duplicate camera devices, redirect video output, things like that, things that on Windows just work out of the box, every time you update your kernel, those modules need to be relinked to the kernel you have installed. That's fine. When you have one kernel installed, if you have multiple, now for every single kernel version you have installed, it needs to be linked to that kernel version. This is going to slow down your update process for every single module you have installed. Luckily, most things we want to be doing are in-tree modules and are not an issue. But the more out-of-tree stuff you have, the longer it's going to take, and it only gets worse and worse and worse with more kernels. Maybe that sounded worse than it actually is. On a modern system, we're talking maybe an extra minute, two minutes to the update process. It's not like a major deal. And look... Just go make yourself a cup of coffee or a cup of tea or something. Don't just stare at the update process the entire time and it's gonna go by pretty quickly. It's just one little extra thing that you need to worry about every time an update for a kernel or one of these modules comes in. So let me know what you're doing on your system. Do you have one kernel installed? Do you have two kernels installed? Maybe you like to test out kernels and you have every possible kernel you can possibly have installed. I would love to know.
So if you like the video, go like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become a one over these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon subscribe to Libero Pay linked in the description down below. That's gonna be it for me and someone install the herd kernel. Thanks,